One of the most common cases in ophthalmology is a patient coming to you complaining of acute pain and swelling on the medial side of the eye. The duration of the symptoms is no more than a few days, and on the examination you see tenderness, edema, and redness. If you palpate and put pressure on that side, on the medial side, you may see pus oozing out of the punctum. Usually other examinations are normal, and it could be a pediatric case. You could see it in infants or middle-aged adults. And the diagnosis would be dacryocystitis, acute dacryocystitis, which is an inflammation of the lacrimal duct and its lacrimal sac. That's why it is seen over the medial canthus. It is usually bacterial. Staph aureus or beta-hemolytic streptococcus is the responsible germ. And for the treatment, you usually need oral antibiotics. Topical antibiotics is not enough. What differentiates it for you from other infections of the eye is pain and swelling on the medial side and pus coming out of the punctum when squeezing. Another common case in your exam is conjunctivitis, which is inflammation of the conjunctiva. And it could be bacterial, it could be viral, or allergic, with different treatment plants and possibly different symptoms. In case of viral conjunctivitis, what you see is this. First of all, the discharge is not purulent. It's just watery, clear. It often accompanies URI, upper respiratory tract infection, in the form of coryza, sneezing, cough, and exposure to a young patient. For example, a young mom or a school teacher. The responsible germ in this case is adenovirus most of the times, and it happens in the fall, the school time. Symptoms are not long-lasting. It's usually less than a week, and it's self-limited. However, a bacterial infection on top of the adenovirus is not impossible. In that case, you see the discharge becoming purulent. And because it's not a dacryocystitis, it's just a conjunctivitis, it's superficial. If it is a bacterial conjunctivitis, it responds to topical antibiotic therapy. If it is just watery discharge, it is short-term and accompanies all those things that I said. In that case, supportive therapy is enough, which usually is warm or cold compress and topical antihistamine therapy. Now, antihistamines are usually used in allergic conjunctivitis. And symptoms in case of allergic ones are very similar to viral conjunctivitis, but it is not correlated with fall. It is more correlated with the spring if it is seasonal and the duration is shorter and it is more frequent. Itching is a common symptom in allergic conjunctivitis. However, both can have watery discharge and symptoms are more or less similar. But it's very unusual for them to give you a case of exposure to a young child in case of allergic conjunctivitis. If they speak of that and you or I, you should think of viral ones, not the allergic ones. Please remember, just because it is called viral conjunctivitis, you don't need antiviral therapy. That is reserved for keratitis caused by herpes simplex. So it is viral, but supportive therapy is enough. And even antihistamines are not needed most of the times. If there is an element of itching and discomfort, a gritty sensation, in that case, you can use decongestant drops or antihistamines. If you see purulent discharge and severe redness and you suspect superinfection with bacteria, in that case, you need erythromycin ointment, polymyxin trimethoprim drops, azithromycin drops, And if your patient wears lenses, in that case, fluoroquinolone is the topical drug of choice. Please remember that this viral conjunctivitis is the same thing in children we call pink eye in school children or kindergarten children. When you see redness and swelling in the eye, either bilateral or unilateral, a gritty sensation and discharge, you should think of conjunctivitis in general, except if you see these symptoms which might raise alarm for other etiologies. One of them is decreased visual acuity, photophobia, ciliary flush, a sensation of foreign bodies, presence of corneal opacities and infiltrates, 
if you see asymmetric pupils, either fixed or unfixed, if you see distorted pupils, bad shape, if you see trouble in the patient keeping his eye open, if you see severe headaches and nausea and vomiting, this might be something else. A simple conjunctivitis does not do these things. Next step, you want to differentiate viral, bacterial, and allergic conjunctivitis. In case of allergic, pollens are usually responsible or allergens, so it's usually bilateral. Bacterial ones and viral ones can be either unilateral or bilateral. Please remember, not being able to open the eye does not differentiate anything. So if the eye is stuck shut, it might be viral, might be bacterial, might be allergic. Naturally, if you see a watery scant discharge, which is clear, you usually think of either allergic or viral. If you see a thick, purulent, sometimes odorous discharge, it is in favor of bacterial conjunctivitis. And in case of bacterial, it is productive, meaning that if you wipe it, you see that discharge reappear. In case of viral and allergic, that does not happen. Itches are more specific to allergic type and a sense of something inside the eye, a gritty sensation, a burning sensation. You should think of viral ones. Prodromal symptoms, like I said, rhinorrhea, sore throat, sneezing, cough, URI. You think of viral ones. On examination, if you see diffuse redness and the surface of the conjunctiva is bumpy or follicular, you think of viral. If the surface is non-follicular, you think of bacterial. This is important because you might think otherwise. Follicular, uneven surface of the conjunctiva is in favor of the viral conjunctivitis or allergic ones. If you see diffuse edema, like thickening of the eyelid and surrounding tissues in the eye, and thickening of the conjunctiva, which is called chemosis, that is in favor of allergic conjunctivitis. Something interesting in case of allergic conjunctivitis is that it is more episodic than seasonal. So you see this wax and vein come and go often, and it is accompanied by a sense of dry eye, a dry eye sensation, like I said, gritty sensation. In the body of the question, there might be a hint of family history or a personal history of eczema in younger ages or some kind of allergy in older ages, like asthma. These are some of the common cases you face in MCCQE1 exam, and we are going to have a comprehensive course on ophthalmology. Comprehensive meaning all the common cases you face in the exam, and we are not going to waste your time with physiology and anatomy. So if you like to see this project continue, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much and take care.